Construct maps are a really powerful tool for helping us process through and try to decompose our definitions and understanding of a construct before we even see any data. And so today what we're going to do is go through an example of some of the steps in a construct map process. So to do that, we're going to be using the physical functioning questionnaire. Um, it has it is a 10 item uh, assessment. It has items such as vigorous activities, uh, like are you able to run? Are you able to lift heavy objects? Or can you participate in like really intense sports? And then another item is like moderate activities. Like can you move a table? Can you vacuum, uh, use a vacuum cleaner? Can you bowl? Can you play golf? Other items are like, can you lift your groceries and carry grocery bags? All the way down to items such as, well, can you bathe and dress yourself? And to respond to these items, typically the responses are commonly coded as zero. I am not limited at all. So I'm not limited to any activities. One is, I'm somewhat limited. Limited a little. Or I'm just extremely limited. So limited a lot. So that's commonly, those are the common response options for this assessment. And so what we're going to do is simplify it and think of this as zero and these as one, just for a simplifying thing to just think about, well, if we respond to an item, it's either I'm not limited or I am to some degree. So to a reminder, so a couple of the items are like for item one, it's are you limited at all in your ability to do vigorous activities, including running and sports? Then the next item is moderate activities. as vacuuming bowl wow I cannot spell bowling today <laughs> bowling golf so and then another one so is just like the last item on the assessment is can you clean so bathe in dress yourself and so what we're going to do is part of the process of developing the contract map is figure out how these characteristics and these items plus our item responses help us kind of understand individual differences in physical function. So the big first part of the contract map is to say, well, on this top end, we're saying those have a direction. I have a direction of increasing ease of physical function. So at this top end, the increasing ease is the focus. And down here at the bottom, we have a direction of decreasing ease of physical fun, physical function. So you can go up and down the scale where individuals are either have a very high functioning, so this is high and low because you can either have very poor physical functioning down here at the bottom, or you can have very high functioning. So part of the process is outlining, well, over here, you have characteristics of respondents. And over here, we have responses to items. So what we can do to fill out this respondent side is we can say, well, those with really high 
physical functioning can do can run do sports lift heavy objects so these are some of the types of characteristics that those that are really high functioning can do and though, however those that are really low functioning some of the things that they can only do is they can like only bathe dress themselves and then like maybe somewhere in the middle you can think of uh well one of the other items is well can i climb stairs and so they can climb stairs so these are the types of activities and characteristics and behaviors that respondents can do and now this is one of the really useful parts of developing a construct map it really helps you try to understand of well what are the characteristics of people but in the case of this assessment of physical functioning it maps on almost directly to the items that we're using so what we then go on to is for the responses to the items so the responses again we think of you're either not limited at all or limited in some way well let's just focus on not limited at all individuals that are able to do vigorous activities have very high functioning so they would most likely respond not limited at all to vigorous activities However, those that are really low functioning would tend to respond not limited at all to bathe and dressing themselves. And we can think about doing this, what type of responses for each individual activity. And what we would do is go through each, all 10 items in the assessment to say, well, which activities are higher are harder or more indicative of higher degrees of functioning that require more functioning to be able to do. And so we can do that for each item. And for most of these responses, we would say, well, if you can do any of these higher level functionings, so if you can run, you're most likely able to climb stairs. And if you can climb stairs, you're most likely able to bathe and dress yourself. So there's kind of a natural ordering to a construct such as physical functioning. And one of the nice things we can do is we can pick any point along our continuum say right above climb climbing stairs so this is where some individual exits on our scale we can think about well how does what is the likelihood of them responding to being not limited at all to be able to bathe and dress themselves we would say they're very likely However, if you can only really climb yourself, so you're at this level, well, they're less likely to be able to say that they're not limited to any of the vigorous activities. And so we can start to look at how do individual responses compare and tend to occur at different levels and different places along this hypothetical continuum that we can think of as more or less able or how easily you can do different physical activities. And so what we'll be doing uh, as this discussion in development of examples of construct maps that are, uh, ensues is we can show and give examples of different types of constructs and showing how our items map directly onto our resulting dimension that will be individual differences in functioning. And that will be some of the power that we will utilize when developing ways of trying to provide evidence that we are doing that. And again, this construct mapping process, there can be a lot of debate back and forth depending on some of the specific items and tasks of, well, which which items should be above or below the others.
And sometimes there might not be a good answer. We just have to give. The big part of this process is giving some initial indication that we can then go back and forth on and that we're then able to connect it to how individuals would respond to items. And that's what we'll focus on as we continue talking about this is expanding how do individuals in items and item responses relate to the construct that we are trying to measure.